Hi, are we on? I'm Katie Jane Hughes. I am going to show you three stages of a red lip because totally bold red lip isn't for everyone and a sheer red lip isn't for everyone. So we're going to give you three degrees, three degrees of red lip. Should have started that again, but this is Uncut with KJH and we don't make edits on this YouTube channel, at least for this series. First of all, sheer lip. This is actually a lip and a cheek. Am I in focus? Yes. Um, this is actually a lip and a cheek from Chanel. I probably used this on my cheeks last. Um, this is Red Camellia, and I'm just gonna go straight in with this. This is my personal one, so that's why I'm going straight into the pot. If it was not my personal, I would absolutely scoop it out first. So a sheer red lip is really beautiful, paired with sort of a fresh face, just for sort of every day. But there's no rules, obviously. If you like a sheer red lip for a red carpet type event or a glamorous event, then you can do that. It's it's a beautiful thing about makeup, it's zero rules. Let me just take a sip of my coffee, please. Um, I could have slept in for about six more hours today. Anyway, so this product is kind of like a lip balm, cheek balm, everything balm texture. It's quite sheer, but you can build it up to like intense color. And alternatives to this would be things like Glossier Gen G, or the one from Violette Affair that kind of has that sort of velvety, satiny, powdery look to it, which I actually also really love. But just for now, this is that. So that's where I would start with a sheer red lip. I would also, um, I would wear this, honestly, just for a date night with Tarek. I would wear it um, out with my girlfriends. I would wear it to a job. It's so simple and cute and natural and not too um, full on. But I also would wear it as part of a look for a night out. I would just pair it with a bolder eye. If you want a little contrast, you can add a little bit of your um, beige or brown or neutral lip liner that you use for your choice. That was Endless Kick Out for Makeup Forever. Next, I'm gonna level it up. I'm gonna do it. So you've seen one degree. This is, this, is, this is level one. I'm gonna shear it down just because I want a lot of that shine that's on the surface of the product to be gone before I go in with this. This is one of the best red lipsticks I think was ever made. This is Beso from Stila, and I'm actually gonna use this in two different ways. So I'm just gonna take a little and just pop it on. I'm gonna take that same brush, but I am gonna buff out all of the texture into my towel. These brushes are my Spectrum Collab brushes, the green ones, you can still get them. They are coming back and they are coming as singles, um, a select few are coming as singles. I got almost everything out of it, and now I'm just gonna use this one to intensify the color and get a matte stain. And that little bit of base from the Chanel pot, the number one camellia, is actually gonna provide a lovely kind of base for this. A little bit of slip, but not too much. One thing that I should tell you about matte, about lipstick in general, whatever is underneath the lipstick will prime the lipstick either in positive or a negative. You might find that you're putting on a matte lipstick with a lip balm underneath and that matte lipstick does not go on matte. It's because of the lip balm. It's the same with if you're putting on a full coverage foundation on a very, very dewy skin, that full coverage foundation ain't gonna go on full coverage anymore. So, just think about it like that. It's quite important to understand what textures are going on underneath before you apply so that you know what it's gonna do and how it's gonna wear. So now that this brush is kind of primed, I'm gonna just fluff the edges and make the lips fuller without looking like I've overdrawn. Because there's a difference between pushing outside of the lines with a brush and overdrawing with a pencil. I like this kind of pushing outside of the lines with a brush more so. But then I think you can also go in with like a lip liner pencil. This is Universal Earth from Make It Forever. A little bit of a reddish version of Endless Cacao. You can also go in and just define where I lost a lot of that pigment of the lip line. Do you see? So that's level two. It's like a matte version of what I did earlier. And next, I'm just gonna go in straight away with this. So one of my, one thing that I am actually just gonna do is I'm just gonna use my fingers to pull down how high this lip is right now. On my, on a job, I would use a brush or some Q-tips, but I don't like wasting Q-tips for the sake of five seconds of showing you how to do a look. But like, I mean, it's fine. Product, starting in the center of the mouth, always. Always start where the lip opens. I transfer to the top, 
and then just slowly start to maneuver the product around. You can, of course, commit to the lip edge and start drawing in your shape. The only downside to that is that you can always do what I just did. Start here and stretch it out. Stretch it to the lip line. If you commit to the lip line and you actually stretch too far, then you have to fight to take some of that back. So I'm just using this fully or the tool on the product to essentially create the shape that I want. And I'm not taking any more just yet. Actually, if there's too much on the wand, you can just get rid of it and on the inside. But again, don't commit to the lip edge. Completely, at least. And the look that I was wearing before this, that I came on camera with, it should be live on YouTube already. And uh, if it is, I will link it below. Okay, this is the tricky part. But not really. You're just going to take this pretty much empty dough foot and you're going to push it to the edges. Because there's not enough on for it to make a mess. There is enough on to get you there. remember you can always go back in with more so now we smile you get into all those creases very important with a liquid mat because if you don't do this and then you smile for a photograph or whatever all that will be visible and you didn't know it Especially down here. I think there's nothing more. I don't know. I feel I feel a certain kind of way when I see celebrities smiling on the red carpet and this line isn't smooth. So now I can. I actually like the slight imperfections in this lip, like here. I could probably go in a little bit more, which I just took. I just took a little from the neck of the bottle. Just a little, and I'm just gonna slightly, like, draw in my cupid's bow a little bit more neatly. By the way, I don't know, you can't see this because I'm not showing it because it's not in my frame. My arm is anchored to my chest. So here's my pajamas. I'm anchored to my chest here. So it's giving me, it's giving me support in my arm. So my range of motion isn't this, it's this because that's the only thing that I can actually move and that's actually quite an important fact that I feel like isn't necessarily displayed anyway you could add lip liner to this I'm not gonna I feel like it's kind of perfect as it is even with like messy hair and the little creaseless clips um I would love to take any questions I am going to shoot some more videos after this um Wow, my teeth look so interesting. Every time I smile, I'm like, whose teeth are those? They're not mine. They're not my funny little, funny little teeth. Um, have an idea. I'm not gonna tell you. I'll tell you when I do it. I don't want somebody to take the idea before I do it. But it's about makeup in public and a video camera and Billy on the street kind of vibe. Too much information. <sighs> Looking for a producer to help me produce it. Maybe a camera operator to help me operate it. Okay, love you all. Bye. Let me know if you have any questions. And also, which lip did you like best? One, two, or three.